Welcome back, everybody, to the European Road to BlizzCon day number one of 2015. It's time to find out who is going to be our second finalist and ultimately one step closer to being crowned the European champion. My name is Frodan. I'm joined by Lothar and Nimsh to bring you guys Tice versus Life Coach. This one has a lot riding on it, not only because the winner of this guarantees themselves $5,000, but because both of them are Lothar's teammates, and it's a little fun to watch him see yeah. who he cheers for and likes a little bit better. Isn't that right, Lothar? Well, I, lo I love them both, so no. it's Yeah, funny. but you, want lo you love one more than the other. Who is it? Yeah, the it's younger me. one. It's always the younger one. Oh, right? it's Tice, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, Life Coach, he's, he, he's, he's learned everything. He's mature, but Tice, he's like the young, upcoming guy that you really want to just, you know, spring up yeah, into exactly. fruition. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So now I should root for Life Coach, even though at the beginning of the tournament I said I would like to see Tice in the final. Uh, I mean, you can root for whoever you want, Nimsh. It's actually a, a free country or free continent. That's perfect. You can then do whatever I'm, you want. Then I'm going to root for Tice. Yeah, you can, you can actually root for Oskaka, even though he just lost. But oh, um, you can do whatever you want. Oskaka is Navi now. Yes, but you're free to root for any player you want uh, that's currently in the top eight. Uh, Tice versus Life Coach, though, are the only two players that are going to be playing right now. So, fortunately, that's going to be uh, not able for you to vote for the other people. Uh, we have Hunter... Warrior and Druid up against uh, the same thing, except instead of the Hunter, we have the Warlock for Tice. And we were talking about how teammates who prepare together end up thinking like each other, except these two players did end up differing on some of their class choices. So, at least on a fundamental level, they approach the tournament differently. Yeah, that's very true. And Life Coach is actually targeting that kind of lineup. So, that puts him in an advantage spot, uh, an advan advantageous spot here. Uh, but Tice knows exactly what Life Coach angle is, so maybe he will turn it around. I mean, I'm really interested how this will pan out because, uh, apart from the fact that they were like boot camping, like you know, in one place, only with two of them, I didn't see a lot of the matches. So I'm really looking forward just to, as, as a spectator here, I would just like to lo love to watch this match. I wonder if Life Coach will, uh, is going to play a bit faster because I believe they played a lot during the boot camp, they played that specific matchups many times just practice. So right now, Life Coach might feel uh, to be in a com uh, just a comfort zone where he just plays cards really fast. Uh, well, we'll see. I mean, in the end, um, you know, it is still a pretty significant thing. I mean, a lot of these players, especially a player like Life Coach, they don't play for the money. I mean, I mean, Life Coach is a very successful person outside of Hearthstone, even before he even started competing at a high level. Uh, he plays for the excitement of it, the, the, the fame, the glory, so to speak, of being the best. Exactly. He and just why not be, be the, the best. best and start now by killing the man that helped you get there as Tice, <laughs> your teammate. Kill him, Life Coach. Eat his soul. Life Coach is, is going to use Tice, his stepping stone, to grab the title of the European champion. Do you think that's going to happen? I think after, if Life Coach beats Tice, he should like reach into his heart and eat it on stage and just like completely kind of consume Indiana his Jones. life energy. And everybody's just going and to And he, he will literally become <laughs> immortal. <laughs> Wait, that, there's still Nyria waiting for him in the finals. Yeah, but, you know, why not become immortal before the final boss? That's kind of what you want to do. I mean, that's kind Dutch. of what, what, what the saying is, right? The, the, young, Dutch, have the young Dutch blood yeah. is what course through the veins <laughs> of immortality. Yeah. And usually before... I'm really delirious, guys. It's been a long day. <laughs> uh, we can see that. <laughs> All right, okay. Well, uh, do, do we have any predictions here? Um, go ahead, Lothar. Yeah, I already said it. You said, you said it's going to be Tice. Yeah. All right, and then you're going to vote f actually for Life Coach? Or were you just... Because we're discussing it. Yeah, we were discussing it, and it seems like Life Coach has a better li lineup because he's targeting Tice. But I feel like Tice is going to take it. Uh, Tice is a bit younger, so maybe he has more stamina. Maybe better he's APM. not that tired as Life Coach. I don't know, man. Life Coach also has two children, very young children. So if anyone who's learned how to... And like build up stamina and deal with young 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 guns, then it's definitely <laughs> life coach. I'm putting my vote in his book. But anything could happen and I wanna see what's going to do in game number one, uh, matchup wise. So Lothar, Nimsh, have fun and enjoy. Thanks, Thanks so much for it. See you at Overwatch. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Yeah, that's right, because this is the, the last match for today. We're going to have the grand final tomorrow, but we're going to see who is going to advance right now. Life Coach versus Tice, Warrior versus Druid is going to be our first game. And Tice is an incredible opening hand. I think you keep three cards out of four, because Sylvanas is not needed like in the beginning of the game, but the Denasus is spiraling into Shredder, into Harrison Jones, and the Harrison Jones is there not to be uncurable, of course, but just to kill that single death spite. Yeah, you mentioned that Harrison Jones is very important in the matchup. You, you're mentioning that you want to kill Death Spite, but how important is that really? Do you 
when do you slam Harrison Jones in turn four or five? I mean, this is something that disrupts the plan of the Warrior player, and it disrupts it so heavily that it actually kills half of the win condition. Because he's not a, a, you, usually when you do a Harrison Jones in a death spot that was played in turn four, you deny him the Grim Patron combo, which basically almost always shuts down uh, the Druid game plan, right? And single-handedly, you shut down, like, you make a reverse comeback by playing Harrison Jones into that. Yeah, I have to agree with this. This is one of the key cards, and um, Aspirant and Pilot. He actually mulliganed Pilot Shredder. Okay, that's interesting. It's very interesting. I wouldn't have seen that coming, to be honest. Well, that's probably because you expect Fiery Warrocks into, so you, you know Aspirant is not going to live, and you want to have an alternative. Uh, you maybe want to fish for something like Wild Grove to have this certain mana crystal that you can use. The consistency? Yeah. But, well, he, he just got it <laughs> right back. He got one. Didn't matter. And there is no Fire Warrocks for Life Coach, so can he really deal with this Aspirant? Nope, there's no Fire Warrocks, but there's the Slam. But I think you just go for the Acolyte of Pain, so you ensure that you'll have a card draw next turn and can always buff it with the Inner Rage to trade with something. So that's also all, always a good option. And Tide might just follow up with a Keeper of the Grove to silence the Echo of Pain, which basically still leaves it open for the Inner Rage unless he attacks with the Dianos' Aspirant. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, would you consider Pilot Shredder at all, or do you just um, slam the silence because you want to deny the cards? And if you play Pilot Shredder, then Aqua is drink, uh, going to draw at least two cards. I think the Keeper has to be played here. The card draw is crucial for Warrior because it's a combo deck. If you don't draw all the parts, you're definitely not winning. So I'm not blaming him for playing the Keeper here at all, but I think maybe he should have attacked into the Acolyte of Pain to deny the value of Taskmaster's Inner Rages, but probably Black Rift isn't playing the Taskmaster at all. So Tide, knowing that, is not playing around, right? Yeah, that's really interesting to see if both players know the exact list of their opponents. And there are no weapons for life coach, so this Harrison Jones is not useful for now, but I believe he will be useful at some point. Mm -hmm. That's that's true, but he has the Emperor. He's lacking though those combo parts, as I said before, to make them to make the uh, the, uh, um, the Emperor worthy of being slammed on the board. But at the same time, he has way win double inner rage patron for turn six. And this is looking scary for Thais. I mean, he doesn't know yet, but <laughs> it yeah. will be. And there is no way to deal with that, so that's one of the things um, that Patron Warrior wants to do. And uh, he's still one turn away. He can't really battle reach as well. So what do you do this turn? You know, as mentioned, Patron double energy whirlwind on turn six. Mm -hmm. You just play Armorsmith and Armor. Uh, Probably. It's really weak because your armor smith dies to Pulse Shredder, so it basically says play two mana minion, heal five, and deal one damage. I mean, that's not the be best deal in the universe, but it's still better than doing nothing. Would you consider not playing armor smith at all? Not with, not with this hand. You will have no time at all to play it unless you play the Emperor, and there's, you know, there's quite two big minions just throwing at you and dealing a lot of damage each turn. So playing the Amos Smith definitely is a good good option. Alright. So for Thais it's uh, an attack with the pilot shredder into the armor smith and he Well the Bigam Hunter is practically useless. It Almost is. useless because Throating Berserkers maybe. Yeah but usually when you see a Throating Berserker uh, on the other side of the board it's charging you for twenty five or something <laughs> yeah. like that. And you're most likely dead. So the big game hunter is just a cool panther without stealth. Makes sense, yeah. And uh, Tyus is trying to pressure warrior because that's of one of the ways how Druid can win. And that's another we minion that can attack into the patrons if Life Coach mm -hmm. pulls the trigger here. That's very cool observation damage because it's crucial to have those minions just attack into patrons if you're lacking like rafts, if you're lacking force of nature, if you're lacking. Savage or whatever. Even a swipe. Sometimes if you just attack into minions, maybe there will be a swipe opportunity. But most of the time, swipe is actually not that, that good versus the Patron board. Yep, that's very true. So do you pull the trigger? Or do you just slam Torison? Well, you can only play one AoE. If you would have two of those, it would be perfect. But he can use one Inner Rage to damage one of the two health minions to ensure there will be less options for ties. And I think he will use Inner Rage for Begin Hunter, but no. I mean, 
Doesn't make sense. Use Inner Rage for additional two patients while well, we kill one one of your opponent minions. Absolutely, that's six patients. Even though two patients are one health, how do you kill all of them? Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Oh, well, that's helpful, right? You can Savage Rogue to kill. No, that's not helpful. All right, so he can kill two free frees. He can silence one free free and Savage Rogue the free two. So there are two patients of one health remaining, and that's it. And one silence one. Yeah, and that's basically. There is no way for Life Coach to gain more patience, but he has three minions on board. And Battle Rage, more importantly, which well, will draw four free cards. Sorry. That's true. That's bad news for Dice, but at this moment he doesn't know about it, so he needs to deal with the board oh, as good as he can. <laughs> second Vitality Totem in this tournament is being spawned by Pile to Treasure. What are the chances of that happening, Monk? No. I, don't, I, don't know <laughs> what, I don't know what the math is. Yeah, Monk <laughs> probably has the stats. Uh, it doesn't change the situation that much, and it's probably better that it's not at one or two attack minions so that Life Coach can't gain. Well, actually, he would never gain the patience anyway. Yeah, yeah, but he will trigger the battle rage, and that would be more important. That's true. That's a really cool move also to put Sylvanas instead of clearing the, the health patron because you're kind of, kind of cutting down on numbers. I mean, by numbers, I'm saying patrons. And, and Battle Rage as well, because he kills the damaged minions, so Battle Rage is going to draw only two cards. Instead. And I think that might also be triggered by the fact that he has the Vitality Totem, which he leaves after the attack into the Patron. That's true, that's <laughs> true. So Vitality Totem wasn't that bad. Yeah, He's it's not that horrible. I mean, the boss one would have been an attack minion. And in that case, he would probably go for, for the clear, for, and silence and clear of the Patron, so yeah. That might actually change the game. So what's there for Life Coach? There yeah. is the Warzone Commander. Well, he can Battle Rage right now. The two cards for two mana, that's not a big, bad deal. And you would like to play the Emperor next turn. If you don't play Battle Rage this turn, then you have no option to get guaranteed two cards, I think. Oh, oh wow. wow, just going for the Warzone Commander. That's very interesting. And look at that, if it takes, ah, uh, if it would take the no mission inventor, that would be such a cool move. But yeah. Right now, Life All right, so well, Life Coach was flying basically. He wanted uh, the no mission inventor to be taken so that he can charge with the patrons and Two then teleport. Yeah. Or, yeah. Or just take the Warzone Commander because you can spawn more patrons too. They will not have charge, but at least you do something. And uh, the Warzone Commander is not that important in case against Druid because you don't need the charge. You just need more patrons to stabilize the board. That's true. The good news for him is that he actually almost cleared the board, so there is nothing on the board to contest uh, the Warzone Commander, but right now we see there is the Keeper, and uh, Thais absolutely has to clear it. But still, it looks uh, that Thais is actually t taking the game slowly. Life Coach has the Battle Rage, and we were hyping it so much with drawing so many cards, but there are no targets right now. He can attack with the uh, Nomad Shinder into Keeper and draw one card, but it's not changing mm -hmm. anything this almost. This is why... This is why I was favoring the Battle Rage last turn, because it would give some more options here. The Emperor would have been more valuable, and you would have the combo of Warzone Commander with Patron. I, I think that would be very valuable in this, this turn, an example, when you can just spawn minions for, from the Keeper of the Grove, right? Well, he still has the, the Patron in his hand, so Battle Rage might be useful, and he has to execute for anything big that Ty is going to play. He gets Dr. Boom, which is a great card. Well, he has 20 damage this turn. That's a lot. He still has Harrison as well for a possible Death Spite or Fire War X top deck. I don't think you even care about the Emperor right now. Well, maybe you sacrifice like, the Vitality Totem and your Cure Power attack with these Force of Nature Savage Roar. I would, I would like to see the clear. Because if you deny Patron any minions, and if you deny Patron just uh, da damaged minions, then oh, he's that. never going to Battle Rage. He didn't use the, um, the Savage Roar. It's very interesting. I wouldn't have wouldn't have thought of that because um, you know that's a lot of damage that you just play on turn nine, right? It's really interesting to see. Yeah, that's true. But on the other hand, if you have the the minions, you'll be able to double Savage Roar. Oh, maybe that do was a bit more spite. damage. That was the depth spot, and that still <laughs> doesn't allow Life Coat to <laughs> to be damaged for the battle yeah. range, which is <laughs> very awkward. But now we have Harris and Jones. And Emperor as well. Uh, wow, Emperor with those Savage Roars in the future. I see the future, Lothar. Dr. Boom 
and then double step sure. Mm hmm. Well, you can do it the same turn, but yeah, it doesn't have charge. That no, it spawns doesn't have three minions, but it's not a three end. That's right. You'll have to wait for that, but still, just developing the board. So, Tyus a pretty good turn, destroying the death spite and uh, having piloted shredder off the top. He now has two minions that threaten the board. A life coach. Well, he doesn't really have to respond, but he wants to draw cards, and there is nothing for him. Yeah, well, that's that's the battle rage sitting awkwardly in the hand. So it says, "Well, I'm one mana, but I do nothing." <laughs> Yippee! He can't even take damage because the weapon got destroyed. Yep, there's nothing you can do. You can just armor up and pass. What about well, execute the five free and play big game hunter? I don't think so. You just want to get damage this turn. <laughs> <laughs> That's like really awkward. But That's if true. you would kill the Harrison Jones, you will be not damaged. So, want to get damaged, draw more cards. And it's still, Dr. Boom is a possibility. That's why BGH is going to have a target. Uh, I think that Ties will go for the Emperor, which seems okay. But I don't know, maybe Dr. Boom has just been better. I mean, you have to ignore the fact that the opponent can have a big game hunter because that's like one of the patrons that actually run that. But at the same time, your hand has a lot of value if it will be discounted. Well, you have the bombs as well. I mean, like when you play Dr. Boom, even if there's a big game hunter, you have two bombs and you have double Savage Roar. So if there's true. no Whirlwind and you've seen a couple of Whirlwind effects and you know that Death Spite is not going to bring another one, yep. then maybe you'll, you'll be closer to lethal. But uh, I can agree with Thorison as well, just getting the cards cheaper as you, as you mentioned. There is a Fireworks though, so Life Coach <laughs> finally has the weapon. Might be too late though. And the Battle Rage just for one card. That has to be an amazing card that's a frauding. Well, without the Orson Commander and Druid still at 30 HP, I think every single every single draw, I mean, and by single I'm saying just one draw, it's just not enough to cut it. Yeah. You know? There's like, no way this is going to happen. No way I can deal that much damage with just one draw. What, it will, what I have to draw next then is like a... Cycle into Battle Rage, into next turn Whirlwind Effect, into pa Patron, so I can spawn more Patron and draw the next Battle Rage with like more than three cards. But that's not gonna happen. How much damage is there right now if he doesn't use the Execute? Okay, he used the Execute, but still, Savage Roar is six damage, so it's 12 plus 8. That's 20. That's 20. 21. Uh, and with, 25. Uh, with Swipe, it uh, should be enough. That's actually 20. 25 damage. 25 damage. Yep, that's it. Thais takes the first game. All right, so Savage Roar from Thais. Yes, that's. Uh, how's the minion called? Called? Let's call in a hero. Call in a hero. Yeah, it's a really cool minion. And too bad it, the turret doesn't you know, deal additional damage with that. That's true. So, cool minion. All right, so Thais uh, taking game number one versus Life Coach in the back of his Druid, double Savage or Emperor Torison. GG. GG to Thais. He's taking the lead. I mean, this game we saw that a few things could have been done differently, and the Battle Rage was a, such a huge waste. I mean, it could have been... Or you're saying that now, but uh, if he would actually steal Nomish Inventor, he would be able to expand Oops. the board again. So that was a gamble that Life Coach took. He that was a gamble, that gamble that... Yeah, that's true, that's true. That's, this is a, a very interesting aspect of the game, when you have to gamble something, but you gamble the odds. You minimize the chances of... of losing the game, right? And that was like a winning play if you could spawn more patrons because your battle would have been way more valuable upcoming turns, but if it failed, if it fails and we saw it failing, then you're kind of stuck and you don't, can't do anything. Yeah, that's true. But you have to be really brave to actually make that decision, especially in the top four of the European Championship. Yeah, that's the one match before finals, before the battle for the European title and the first crowned European champion. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Nairia is waiting for one of those guys uh, who is going to advance. So, what do you think the, the win for Thais means? Like, we mentioned at the very beginning that Life Coach has an advantage with his lineup, with the Hunter. Do you think that the win with the Druid actually gives Thais a, a bigger chance to, to take the series? It's not necessarily about the Druid. It's about all about the Handlock. And if Thais, is, if Thais can seal an example in the upcoming match, who will pick the, the Warlock and he can seal that, then I can see Thais winning the whole match. But if the wall will be left behind, 
and this will be like the last match. A reverse sweep from from life coach could, could be very easily uh, very easily achievable by life coach. So you think like he is targeting handlock specifically? Yes, yes he does. I mean, you can see that by the lineup. Like the warrior has big and hunter has other attacks to battle those handlocks. So I, I talked with life coach and he said it's like 70-30 for patron. That's his statement. He thinks that 70-30 for patron player. I mean for his deck. And because it's so tacked against handlock. And then we have the Druid, which is also a really good deck against handlocks. And then we have a Hunter, which is the natural predator also of warlocks. All right, that's exciting, but this is not a match we're going to see. see? We're going to see Warrior versus Warrior, and there is a Brawl. There is a Brawl and a Big Game Hunter in the same deck. Is Thais playing Big Game Hunter? This is... We've seen Brawl from Thais. I'm not sure if we've seen Big Game Hunter. Oh, yeah, right. Because that's Life the... Coach is playing Big Game Hunter. Thais is playing Brawl. And uh, this means that Thais will have an advantage. In this situation, both players can use Brawl, maybe. We'll see how it goes. But now we see that Life, uh, sorry, Thais already has it in hand. So he's, he's kind of... His mind is, uh, is, is in an easy spot that he don't necessarily have to deal with like a hassle of, you know, damaging all the patrons, executing those minions, yeah. and just uh, um, spend so much resources to deal with the board. In this case, it's just one one card and maybe one swing from the weapon. There is something even better. Like, obviously, uh, because this matchup is about who gets the patrons first and who is able to set up the, the patron board, normally there is no brawl. Uh, as you mentioned, brawl will be amazing. But also the feeling of the phantom brawl. Can Life Coach really pull the trigger if he knows that the brawl is in the deck? And he knows the brawl is in the deck because they tested it. Yes, of course. But I think that if you prolong the game, there's a bigger there's a bigger chance of your opponent drawing the brawl. So it may be better to tr to just pull the trigger way before, like the early the uh, the the first moment you can encounter to just play those patrons and hope your opponent doesn't have brawl. If he has it, well, too bad. That's a fair point. All right. Uh, even there, uh, even though there is a brawl for Thais, I actually like Life Coach's hand. Well, he has the patron, he has the inner rage, and he plays the Taskmaster. So yeah, he's only lacking the Wyvern effect, which might be a Death Spite maybe next turn. Who knows? But we see that Thais is playing a Death Spite, and he has already an hand. Yeah. Well, there is no mission inventor for Life Coach, so he is um, getting some draws right there. Thais is looking for a patron. I think you should, you should consider just cantripping here with the shield block. Because you probably won't get damaged so fast. So, yeah. Shield block first, see what's happening. Oh, that's really cool for next turn if you're still lacking a decent turn. Because you can slam your own Acolyte for more draw. If your opponent doesn't drop anything that, you know, is easily killable by Death Spider. This matchup is so difficult. Like we've mentioned that we want to explode the patrons to turn 5, but sometimes you just wait. Just wait until turn 8, 9, 10, and whoever gets a Torison earlier is going to have an advantage to draw the cards, maybe deal some damage, but not that much damage in the very beginning because he wants to deny the Battle Rage, and then some player has to play cards at some point. Mm -hmm. And whoever pay, uh, pulls the trigger first and misses without killing his opponent gives the uh, opponent an opportunity to actually win with Frodings. Yeah. That's very true, and uh, that's interesting to see in those matchups because it requires a lot of decisions, a lot of fast decisions. Especially, it comes with practice, of course, because uh, you can you can predict the damage just by seeing how many cars are already on board, in like a few seconds, because those scenarios are um, just you know played over, and over, and over again. So you can be accustomed to this to the scenarios that can happen. And that's really important when you're playing Patreon. Oh wow, there is a Torison draw for Thais, and he has so much draw available to him, so he will be able to increase Torison's value for the next turn. This turn just draw as much as possible, and there is a Patron as well, wow. So that also changed the plan, because if there would be no Patron, he would have gone um, with other draw. means of, of drawing cards, right? Uh, but he just saw he's drawing the Patron, so he can just go all in right now, and he will most likely do it, because as we said before, he's if he knows that there's a Brawl in his opponent deck, he wants to spam those minions as soon as possible. We haven't seen Brawl from Life Coach. I mean, not in this tournament, because he was playing it before. Mm -hmm. That's true, but Thais knows better, probably. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. They, te they did test. Life coach would not hide a fact from Thais. He would be like, hey, you know, I, I added the brawl last minute. Yeah, yeah. two minutes before deck submissions. <laughs> Just to surprise you. Have you submitted your decks before? Yeah. All right, so I'm adding brawl. Life coach uh, thinking what to do. Uh, he had the possibility to just play Patron, Inner Rage, Inner Rage. No ruin effects, so that wouldn't be that good. And he's, there is that uh, Death as well. He's sitting at 10 cards right now, so he has to do something. One of the options is coming out for War X to kill the Acolyte of Fane, which is kind of okay, but I would go with the Armor Smith. I that's Master as well? You can that's Master there. Oh, yeah, that's Master is also good. Yeah. Okay, so Life Coach in the position where he tries to draw the cards, maybe set up some board. But for Thais, this is a big turn. Let's see if he will go for it, because he has Warson Commander. So what about... Tor I like Torson actually. Yeah. If you would have a Frothing Berserker in this hand, that's an instant Emperor right now. But with or with the Frothing Berserker, no. you have to this think. might have a merit just, you know, to do a Patron double Wilwin turn. I think there is no need to rush the Patrons here. Uh, if you play... Emperor, you had so many good cards. You double Whirlwind, which is essential, and then both Patron and Warsong to make them six mana tall. And you still have some draw, so you will be able to draw into that Frontling Berserker eventually. The fact is, like, even with the Warsongs and the Patrons, you'll have such a big board and so many possibilities that the Warsong and Frontling that, that is still in the deck will be something that you can draw into mm -hmm. and just use it as a finisher. It's not like you have to deal 40 damage with one Frontling. If you deal enough damage with with patrons, maybe there will be no, no way for life coach to, to recover, and then the simple frauding with only eight attack is going to steal the game. Oh, yeah, only five attack. <laughs> it's not. I mean, in this situation, if he draws the frauding berserker and he has the triple whirlwinds, that's around 38 damage usually, even with an empty board. So, that's oh, there is a brawl for life coach. See, <laughs> you know your teammates, that's for sure. Yeah, but what I was trying to say is that Thais in his situation has a means if he draws the, for the Frothing Berserker to kill Life Coach in one big strike, uh, even with an empty board from all players. So this will be kind of tricky for Life Coach to win, but at the same time it's like a it's like a game of cat and mouse because both players will be trying to you know spam the board, but might be bait, bait out the brawl. It's so, it's so interesting. Well, Dice, Dice makes the gamble that there is no brawl, I believe. So he's going to attack on his minions. All of the minions having only uh, two or one attack. So just a simple attack with the patron is going to respond more patrons. He is spending Warsong on the patron, but maybe without the whirlwinds, just getting the, the whole board almost. Well, he has battle rage. And that's the most important thing to do here, because it's one mana, draw, in this situation, four cards, and I think that's the moment when you want to do it because you will be still at ten. And if you if you burn, let's say a Frozen Berserker next turn, that's really awkward. Yeah. And the second death spite, and now that's it. There's yeah. no Frozen Berserker in hand. That there might be an option to just you know burn the Frozen Berserker. And that's a huge loss. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the key cards, but there is an even bigger card. If he burns a second Warsong, what happens then? Well, then he's pretty much tucked. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that was a powerful turn from Thais. He decided to pull the trigger. He hopes there is no brawl, but there is one for Life Coach. So this seems like a brawl. Kill whatever is left with the weapon and then armor up. Pass. Well, Life Coach is still very low on health. Even with the brawl and the possibility of just, you know, swinging back the board, he can be easily killed by the Frontic Berserker. And that's something you want to think about. And I'm sure that Lifeguard would like to, to find out a scenario when he can be as, as safe as possible, as soon as possible. So maybe take for the second uh, armor smith in the situation. But first you have, of course, to deal with the board at hand. There was also a crazy play of playing Warsong, a uh, Frothing Berserker, using Inner Rage on both Frothing and Warsong, then the Battle Rage. Oh, actually, he will not have enough mana for that. I was thinking, yeah, like, can he, can, he, <laughs> can he get, like, ruins? No, 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 unfortunately, not possible. Oh, man. All right, he dealt with it. Just kill the free one. He can use the Inner Rage, he can use the weapon, he can do whatever he wants. 
I bet you five dollars that this will be the uprooting berserker burned. Uh, I think it's war song. <laughs> <laughs> and so is it a shield? Oh, no, it's an inner rage. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh. Stice got pretty lucky there with an inner rage burn, but he did spend the war song. He did spend the f uh, patron, and now he needs to find more combo parts. Uh, Death Spite is pretty nice because he can deal a bit more damage, and Life Coach is uh, really low and at 16. Normally, 16 is not that slow. It's half your health and you will be happy, but versus Green Patron, I'd say it's pretty low. Yeah, it's similar to the situation against Droids, right? You usually don't want to be nearby 13, 15, 16, because they can just... Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, there is Torison for Life Coach. So I wanted to say, like, what does Life Coach really need? to win this game, and I was looking at Warsong and Frolling, but he doesn't have any war in effects. Mm -hmm. But the fact he has that Torison will mean that maybe then he will be able to use the Inner Rages, draw the cards with Battle Rages, eventually get the Whirlwinds, or Unstable Go, and win the game through that. That's true, that's a very good point. And uh, would you go for a draw right now? Well, you can go Emperor, Inner Rage or Emperor, and then Battle Rage, the draw for draw two cards, get the effect of the Emperor on them, and you count on them being a Frothing Berserker and a Whirlwind, or an Unstable Goal, because that allows you to make a really huge combo next to him. What about just uh, Emperor Hero Power and trying to leverage Patrons next turn? Patron, Inner Rage, Patron. I think Love Coach, with such an advanced board state, I mean card advantage from both players, I think he would be going rather for an OTK than you know, just spamming board with patrons. I, I like I like keeping enrages for, for patrons. Right now life coach is in this uh, weird position where if he doesn't clear the board, he might just die. Like even with the patrons actually, if there is a frauding, it's over. So what ha what does he have to do? You say OTK, right? So you need to like worse on frauding. Well, D he has run. War Song, he has Rolling, he has Patron, he has Double Inner Rage, he's just missing the one, one, two Whirlwind effects. And he would have drawn two cards, and that Inner Rage is not that important, because um, if you use Inner Rage on your Frothing Berserker, basically the Nines will win with it. So you can double Inner Rage and double Whirlwind, an example. It's like, I think that the Inner Rage has less and less value, um, like when you progress into the game. All right. I, I think I agree with that, and uh, it seems like Life Coach keeps Bad Rage for better, better times. Inner Rage for a draw, so a cantrip. Maybe oh, Life Coach is cha challenging himself. Life Coach says to himself, I can win those games without using Bad Rage ever. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's like an achievement he wants to do. Putting a handicap on himself. Yeah, but that looks terrible for Life Coach next turn. Throwing Berserker with almost, uh, sorry, with Free War with Effects. And Free will with effects. That is just crazy. That's true. There is a death spite. So that's one word of effect for him in theory, but Tice has so much damage to his hand. Is there anything he can do? Life coach maybe even doesn't want to play minions at all in this situation. The problem is he needs to kill the Acolyte of Pain, and if he wants to do that, he would like most likely like to do this with a Execute, but he's lacking that. He can go for the battle rage for just one card, which is the same scenario as we see, as we have seen in the game one, which is not ideal, of course, but at least it's one mana for one card, so it's a good deal. But it has so much more potential. Well, at this point, I think because no, he knows he's dead to frauding a war song shenanigans. He has to assume there is maybe no frauding or no war song in Tyson's hand. So he makes a play like there is nothing that kills him this, uh, this turn. And he sets up uh, the kill for the next, next turn on his side. Uh, but we know that Tyson has it. Yep. That's going okay. to be game. Tyson is going with Warson Commander into Patron. And that will be enough with all those who are in the facts to steal the game. He doesn't even need the frauding. And now this, the you know, steep steps for Tyson will begin. Because he has to win with that handlock which might be, you know, kind of lacking. Yeah, we, we did identify Headlock as the weak link. Right now, Thais is taking this one game to GG. You know, he has three chances with the Headlock. Yeah, that's true. And it's a very explosive deck. It can be as explosive. Well, okay, maybe it's not that instantly explosive as Patron. 
But yeah, congratulations that 2-0 seems push. good. Can he actually win one more game to seal it versus Life Coach? It's really going fast, right? Yeah, I, I believe it's going fast. Uh, Tyson had decent draws and he's playing really well. Life Coach obviously also playing great. Mm -hmm. But it seems like Tyson's is... Uh, look at him, he's so focused, he's so relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> they both know that he's like, we're already at BlizzCon, man. You know, we just play for fun now and for the title, but we are already at BlizzCon. And that was the goal here, to get to BlizzCon to play at the World Championships, because that's the biggest tournament of the year. What I like about both Life Coach and Tyus is that they treat every game seriously. Like mm -hmm. when I see them in tournaments, is it like round one or just whatever round? Even in the um, open qualifiers when they play versus um, any players, they always play seriously. Yep. Well, they are pro players and they always strive for the, for the best. So for the best results, for the best decks, and for the best strategy in general. So I'm not really surprised that you have that kind of observation here. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for, for you and for, for the team as well. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so handlock for, for Thais. Um, is that demon handlock? That's the demon one, right? Uh, yeah, that's demon handlock. Yes, yes it is. The, it's incorporating a Doomguard, it's inco incorporating a Jaraxxus, and of course, the eternal Morganis, which Morganis. is not so internal most of the time. So what will be the best matchup for Thais? You mentioned that the patron has Brawl, Bigim Hunter, so it should be able, if, if he draws those cards, he might be able to take the game. But on the other hand, if there is, a brawl early in, uh, for Life Coach. Mm -hmm. There might be no opportunity to cast it if there is only one minion on the board, and if there is a giant and there is no big encounter. Sometimes you don't draw it, and there is a giant just, just attacking you, and the, uh, the only way to kill it is just attack with a death spite maybe two times. Yeah, it's true. It's also different when your opponent knows that you're playing a brawl, and if your opponent doesn't know that fact, because that changes a lot when it comes to handlock uh, bo board building, because he can just overextend and then he'll be punished by the brawl, but Tice knows that, and he'll probably not go for it. All right, so, so game number three is starting right now. If Tice is, uh, is going to win versus Life Coach, he's advancing and he's going to face Nairia in the finals, fight for the title of the European champion, but there's a plot twist. Life Coach has the lineup set up to win versus this kind of Warlock, and it might be a reverse sweep for him. Let's see, this is exciting. The turn four Twilight Drake into turn five, Giant. Fine. Mountain Giant. And you can, of course, also coin Giant on turn 4. On turn 3, sorry. Right, Nimsh? No, you can't coin you the can't? Giant. That's the pro player test. Everyone has to take one. Well, the prop, one of the pro player tests is do you live tap on 5 and play the Giant, or do you just play Giant for 4 mana? Mm -hmm. A lot of people, a lot of players actually just play Giant for 4. Yeah, that's true. Like, I think it depends on what do you face, and most of the time it might be better to play the Giant first because of the looming Vikim Hunter, but at the same time if your opponent is already ahead, then you don't want to lose more. So it's a tricky, tricky question. That's true. Well, Tyson's hand looks good, as you mentioned, so looking at Life Coach, he has some draw, he has double execute for the early threats. He doesn't have that much draw, like you want to have Acolyte of Pain. And he needs to pick up Torison at some point, but the fact that he has Throttling and Warsong already and the Death Spite seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. But Tyson's at Tyson's turn three, I think he just drops the Begin Hunter because it's almost useless in this matchup, and it doesn't damage enough. It doesn't deal enough damage to Life Coach uh, character to trigger Battle Rage, so it seems like a good drop. And also, you're going second, so you do want to drop one of the cards from your hand because otherwise you would have to use the coin with no real effect. Because it will be overdrawing. And you're a beatdown. Like, your uh, yep. handlock, a Tice, right now, is the one who has to dictate the tempo. He has to play the minions to attack Life Coach and just stop him from um, extending his, his influence on the board. Life Coach is the one who wants to play the control game. He wants to draw as many cards as possible to accumulate the combo parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Tice just wants to deal consistent damage each turn, build a wall, and sit like a, you know, king in a castle in front of those walls built from giants and just laugh at the warrior. Actually, from my perspective, I think Tides want to, uh, wants to, be, to build up the, the walls and then he wants to grab the walls and throws the, throw those walls <laughs> to Life Coach. Might be the case too. No Mission Vendor seems alright. A 2-4, you draw a card, it contests the 4-2 as well. Uh, he can play Death Spite just to kill the 4-2, uh, but he doesn't have a Patron, so he's not gaining that much from the Death Spite play. And in general, this matchup 
if you play as a patron warrior, you want to be explosive as much as possible. So you're not aiming into a Warzone Commander patron turn, because um, usually you'll, your patrons will die to a hell, single Hellfire or Shadow Flame. And that's easily doable by the, uh, by the uh, handler player. So you want to deal as much damage with the Throating Berserker, and you need that Emperor to do that. Double Inner Rage, look at that. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to see the first giant. Uh, Life Coach obviously has a way to deal with it. Um, not really using Death Spite. Would you, you consider using Death Spite at all? To deal four damage to the face? Uh, it's kind of early to do that. Not the face, like even use the Death Spite, just save your executes. Or is it just uh, play any better? I play? think you should just execute the giant with the either Inner Rage or Taskmaster, but Taskmaster is obviously better because it allows you to put, to, to put a little pressure on the, on the board, which which uh, means that, you know, the handler player has to do something about it. And they, they don't have a keeper, they don't have uh, easy ways of dealing with a single creature of that size, because usually they have to, have, like, to spend a Dark Moon on it, and th that's not ideal. And also would work around uh, their in ineffectivity when it comes to mana usage. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, Ty is going with the Twilight Drake, but that's... Uh his last threat. He had the giant. He has a Twilight Drake. Life Coach can easily deal with it. Mm -hmm. He is looking for the Void Cores. He has uh, more giants in his deck. Another Twilight Drake as well. I believe he's not running Lothar. With double Big Game Hunter in this sure. deck. He probably Demon Handlock normally doesn't because you have to uh, fit Doomguard, double Void Caller, and Mulganis as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. It makes sense because you drop the Belchers, you drop the low tip to make space for that. Sure. Does he play Mortal Coils? Oh, uh, we didn't see those. But I, I would say he plays those, right? They are just too good. And it makes so much sense when you're playing four attack minions like Twilight Drake. Maybe he plays one. He might have cut yeah, one we, a Mortal Coil for Big Game Hunter because he's playing two. Probably see in a few draws when the game progress. So Life Coach has a couple of options. He doesn't really have to use Execute. He can maybe use Fire War Axe in a Rage on the Taskmaster and attack into the Twilight Drake. I don't think you need to clear that at all, because it's for attack is not, is not pressuring enough, so maybe you should just ignore it. But at the same time, you're getting a lot of armor, and maybe at some point you'd like to Battle Rage if you draw it, so... Hmm. I think like Life Coach would love to draw the Battle Rage because right now with just a combo he will not have enough mana to, to execute uh, everything with the Frauding War Song if there is not enough minions on board. But if he gets something like Torison or actually a Battle Rage, he will be in a much better position. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot of Look at that. How did he fit all those cards in the deck? 32 cards, man. Yeah, are you sure like cards. he's playing 30? Might be more. <laughs> And Volcor is also great. But oh, also, imagine how big of a deal it would be if Hearthstone allow you to put more than 30 cards in the deck. How big of a deal is that? Um, I think that's a really big deal because it hits fatigue as a win condition. Mm -hmm. So some people can actually play more, even though the decks are less consistent because of the, the more cards. Like, Face Counter would love to play less cards than 30, actually. Of course. That would change uh, the game a bit, maybe in the future, maybe in the future. But I wanted to say, oh, yeah. uh, to talk about the Void Caller <laughs> a bit. Uh, it's, it is a Demon Handlock, and Void Caller is one of those cards why th that makes this deck better um, than Standard Handlock versus Patron. Mm -hmm. That's true, because first of all, it has free attack, so it's not an easy prey for the Patrons. But second of all, everything that has, that has a Death Rattle is really important against we we weapon-based classes because then you put more pressure uh, when after your opponent uses the weapon and his uh, health points as a resource. Uh, but at the same time, Malgan is popping out from Void Core when your opponent wants to make a lethal turn. It is kind of awkward. Yeah, and uh, you only have two executes in the deck, maybe a shield slam, uh, limited amount of removal. Mm. Life Coach goes for the draw though, the Inner Rage. And he oh, roped! He roped and he had the no mission inventor. That, that's yeah. kind of painful. That's the that's first life. time we, that's that the first time we that's, see it today. That's, that's life coach for you. <laughs> that's rope coach. Oh, he's devastated now. Oh no! <laughs> I made a mistake. Nine. What am I going to do? How am I going to recover from this? Oh, nine. So what did I do? Okay. Anyways, so no no mission inventor for life coach. He only has the free two. Uh, on Tyson's side, well, he's to, start to find a way to take advantage over this board. Mm, he might think about using low tip this turn, because he sees the depth spite. There's 
a lot of stuff happening. It might have might happen next turn if you want <laughs> if you will allow spells to be played. And I like the loadup a lot. It's putting so much pressure on the board also. And he actually has some bursts as well in the form of Hellfire. Uh, he's not getting close to killing life coach yet, but this is a two or two three turn plan. There is a patron for life coach who is hiding from us. <laughs> he just covers his face. <laughs> he's trying to not show uh, his expression to ties. I really like the fact that players are actually sitting in front of each other. I've seen like before. I've seen Pavel actually like looking at life coach from time to time. Yeah, I, I, would, I really love that a lot. I would love to see also players talking during the games, like. We had that experience from TCGs when we are going like to a tournament, to a Dark Fair from World of Warcraft or whatever. Then we usually, usually, usually talk to the opponent to also tilt him. Right? That's true. You can use talking to influence the game, but it, it's kind of hard to maintain a conversation in the noise cancellation headset. Yeah, yeah. I just mean in Hearthstone has to be done differently. You sit in a booth in a cancel some cancellation booth. That's true. Both players are sitting there. Kind of like, like last, last year's BlizzCon, but they had the in-year stuff too. So, you know, maybe that will be this time. Maybe in the future, yeah. Yep. Alright, is life coach just roping again? Do you attack the weapon? Not really. The turn ended there. Mountain Giant for Thais. Uh He has a lot of pressure, but he's not there yet. What can he expect on turn he 9? He needs to taunt up. That's for sure. He needs to taunt up because he knows something fishy is going on. Uh, actually, Life Coach has uh, a great setup. He has double throwing, Warson Commander, Inner Rage, and Whirlwinds. And so, <laughs> turn 10 is going to be deadly. Deadly weapon, that's for sure. Mel Gibson will be proud. But, uh, I think the turn for Ties, you have to definitely put the defensive Argus. Maybe you should even think about Sun Fury Protector. Because you, you, you also kind of worry about the single throwing Berserker with a lot of with a lot of whirlwind effects and you know, just executes. You saw one, but there can be a second one. Yeah, there is a lot of uh, minions on board, and uh, Thais doesn't have Mulganis. Where Mulganis sometimes is a card that can save you if it drops from Void Color. Mm -hmm. um, Jaraxxus is not going to do much yet. If Life Coach decides to kill the Void Color, Jaraxxus is being taunted by a Sunfree Protector. It's actually an excellent card that's going to protect you from patrons. That's true. The Jaraxxus might seal the deal if there will be no second execute. But at the same time, how much damage Lifecut has? Well, he can't go through the turns right now, does he? Right? He uh, has he two wound effects. He can't. Uh, well, he can use Inner Rage on Voidwalker, attack into the 6-6 six six, uh, with his weapon, deal two AOE effects, and that will effect 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 effectively clear all the minions apart from the Defender of Argus, and that's two wound effects with five minions. Uh, 6 minions, so that's 12 damage, 13 from the Inner Rage, and 2 damage from the Floating Berserkers, so that's 17 damage right now. 3 of lethal. Uh, he will not be able to Whirlwind this turn. Well, I'm just talking about playing 1 Floating Berserker with, with Whirlwind and Execute. Inner Rage. Okay, oh. what about Patrons? Well, right now he doesn't have time, but... Wait, doesn't he have Levon if he uses Execute for that? Because you play... Warson Commander, uh, Ferrothin Berserker, Whirlwind, Inner Rage, Execute. <laughs> Life Coach dropped again! Hmm. Screenshot now to count the damage later. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good question for the viewers uh, in front of the PCs. Was there lethal a possible way? Uh, Life Coach decided not to make an action. Uh, he is waiting for one more mana because uh, with 10 mana crystals, he will be able to do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With um, he will be able still to play one uh, frauding with all the things he wanted to play with execute as well, or maybe double frauding with Warwin. But uh, from Tyson's perspective, there are tons being played. And now the big bad mountain is played. Yeah, do you do you taunt? Uh, of course you do. <laughs> I think you have to. Just no way you can taunt this. The question is, version. do you taunt the two free as well? Uh, not necessarily. I mean. At this point, you know, the patrons are not really making a big difference, so maybe you should. Wow, with, well, the, with actually Unstable Gold, that's the third world in fact. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> third world in effect, but he's going for the, for the patrons. Yeah, well, he has to use those... When we talked about the, um, 
the possibilities of you use patrons, that's like the second possibility. You just want to clear the minions from your, of your opponent with the patrons. That's like one of the possibilities. Otherwise, you're dead. Pretty much dead. All right, so there's Execute and uh, Life Coach hopes there's no Malganis uh, going for the, the Void Caller. He needs to execute the Giant and now just attack the Patience. Still has the weapon attack and one more Warrior in the fact. So easily clearing those minions. And now there is a big moment for Life Coach. He shakes his head. Please no Malganis. And the rope starts burning. There's a lot of animations going on. Void Caller is still not spawning. He's waiting in the... Voidcore is just trying to win ties the match. Oh! There is Jaraxxus. And now uh, Life Coach actually doesn't have lethal. He's missing free damage. Can he attack with all the patrons? No! And he missed additional attacks. That's, that's, that's it. it. That's, that's game. it. That's, that's game. That's match. Life Coach is losing to Ty's 3-0! Life Coach actually wrote so many times, was there one time too many. Maybe that Gnomish Inventor would actually change the game. That would be a couple more uh, damage points, but what a match. Ty's clean sweep. Clean sweeps his um, teammate, Life Coach. Congrats to Ty's. He's going as the second finalist. Yeah, Ty's the European Championships. They are going to fight for that title. And uh, well, Lothar, yeah, I'm sure you're happy. Yes, of course I'm happy. <laughs> the outcome was not really a big factor here. Both of my guys, one of those guys is in the finals. I'm really happy for both of them because they will be going to BlizzCon. And that's the big deal. Yeah, absolutely. We are going to see more of them um, in, the, in the future. But for tomorrow, we'll have this match ready. Uh, Thais versus Naria. But right now, I would love to hear from Thais. So Rachel, take it away. Thanks so much, guys. Thais, you were the first 3-0 on the stage here. Did you know that? I'm realizing it now, but uh, no, I didn't know it before. I have to say, this was incredibly fast for a match against Life Coach. You guys both uh, brought your all. I feel like maybe you brought a little more all here. Uh, but what happened to the, the relationship between you guys? You're hugging and having a good time and smiling at each other, and then you sit down and you are ice cold in that chair. Well, that's just when we are playing the game. I mean, we. We both said, yeah, we're just going to give our best. And uh, we knew each other's decks card by card. So it was kind of an annoying. And we maybe made some different plays even because of that. But um, yeah, it was a good game after all. And uh, I mean, we are both at this con, and that is what matters. That is what matters. But tomorrow, you're going to be on this stage against Nyria. Now, uh, what do you know about him as a player? A uh, really good player, um, has a pretty cool same playstyle as me, plays a lot of uh, the similar decks, so it's going to be a close match, and uh, we will see. I'm going to give my best. All right, well, we'll let you get out of here, get rested, and get prepared for tomorrow. I'm going to hand it back to the casters one last time for today. Thank you very much, Rachel, and congratulations to Tice, as he is the second finalist here at the European Road to BlizzCon, which means... Tomorrow, it's all set. Nyria versus Tice. Only one person will walk away as the European champion for 2015 of the Hearthstone World Championships. Uh, a long day has concluded. So let's go ahead and wrap up the day. Nimsh, uh, walk me through your favorite moment. My favorite moment, uh, one of my favorite moments was, I think, double Savitar and Force from, from Life Coach. That was so much damage, but he, he still lost the series. Um, so even though there was this one big explosion of druids, mm -hmm. he still lost that. Um, I like the fact that hand, like, Patron was uh, pulling the wins versus Handlocks. Even though people tried to, to counter pa uh, Patron with Handlock, still uh, we had expert players who were able to, to take advantage of that. But yeah. in the end, Tice was the one who, who won that Handlock uh, Patron match, which was the most clutch one because with, with Lothar we mentioned that Handlock was the, the weak point of his lineup. So when it really mattered, he took that match. Yeah, absolutely. Lothar, uh, probably a lot of good stuff for you. Uh, if you could just pick a, a moment. Oh, the one moment was heartbreaking for one of the players here. I, I think everyone will remember, especially you two, because we were casting that moment when Pavel well misplayed with the Sylvanas and he just played like Dr. Boom. I, I think that's one of the memorable moments. It doesn't happen so often at high level play. And yeah, 
That's, that's the thing I'll remember yeah. from this event. It's like a four-leaf clover. You don't get to see that kind of disaster uh, <laughs> end up being the result of the series, especially in a conclusive fashion like that, mm -hmm. to determine the BlizzCon yeah. winner. Uh, my personal favorite, favorite moments have to be uh, just being able to witness all the players go through and just uh, see the final moments of the four players standing there. It's like, that's, that's just a lot of dreams come true for a lot of people. Last year, Nyria uh, had unfulfilled dreams of being able to get there. And Ty's now people... The same. Tice exactly, the Tice the same too. He was one round away, and now players who lose this year, if they come back next year, will be in the same boat, right? They have to wait their <laughs> turn, and this year was the players for uh, the previous year in 2014 who didn't get to go that far. We yeah. actually forget about Life Coach. Life Coach he was, was the same boat. Mm -hmm. He was the one who qualified, and he was eliminated off stream uh, last year. All right, that's yeah. true. That's true. Well, let's take a look at the uh, the standings and the brackets of what we saw today. For anybody who just didn't really get to see all parts of it, uh, in the single elimination portion, we had the top four players who already are going to BlizzCon, but ultimately one will be the European champion, winning ten thousand dollars. And currently, the date is for tomorrow. Tice versus Nyria. I'm going to be really excited to watch. Make sure to tune in here uh, on the channel, whatever you guys are watching. We're going to be here as well. A big shout out to the crowd as well. They've been here the entire time. Uh, some people have been here from beginning to end. So thank you so much. The crowd, you are lovely. From Prague, Czech Republic, thank you so much for watching. Frodan, Lothar, Nimsh, Savit, and everyone here. Have a good night, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.